Hello everyone and welcome back to our discussion of projections. In the last video lecture we were talking about a fundamental problem that we have in geographic information systems which is that the earth is round, it's spherical, it's a three-dimensional object. But most of the time that we view geographic information we view it on a two-dimensional surface, either a hard copy map or a computer monitor or a projection screen or something like that. So we have to convert all of our three-dimensional spherical coordinates to something flat uh, in order to uh, make that happen. And the way that we make that happen is through a projection. And a projection is a mathematical and systematic transformation from the spherical coordinate system of the Earth to a flat Cartesian grid. So we've got the three-dimensional angular coordinate system of latitude and longitude that we talked about, and then we convert that to something two-dimensional to fit on a sheet of paper or a computer monitor. The problem is, however, that it is impossible, it's absolutely impossible to preserve all of the information from the spherical surface to the flat Cartesian plane. And that means that anytime we do this transformation, we're going to be introducing some kind of distortion. Therefore, it's your responsibility to understand projections and adopt the correct one for the cartographic or analytical purposes at hand. There is no perfect projection. Each one has advantages and disadvantages that you have to be familiar with, and you have to use the right one in the context of your analysis or in the context of a map that you are trying to create. There are two major ways that we can classify projections. The first one is by what information a particular projection preserves about the planet, and the second is by developable surface. In this video, we're going to be focusing on the first one, what information is preserved by a particular projection, because we just said that it's impossible to completely accurately make that transformation from three-dimensional to two-dimensional, impossible. So you have to make certain choices about what you want to preserve. That's one of the major reasons why there are so many different projections out there, because they all preserve different things, and so they have their own particular uses in particular contexts. So let's take a look at what information a projection can preserve. The classification of projections by information preservation. The first big one is conformal projections, and they preserve angles or shape. If you want everything on your map to look right, if you need all of the shapes to be accurate, then what you can do is use a conformal projection. Let's take a look at one of those. Here is a conformal projection. It preserves angles, technically, which means that it preserves shape. Take a look at this map. This is a Mercator projection. It is a conformal projection. And so everything looks the right shape. If you take a look at this and you take a look at a globe, take a look at the shape of North America, of South America, of Asia, uh, of all of the different continents, take a look at Greenland, uh, take a look at all of that and you'll see that if you compare this to the globe, that everything looks to be the right shape. And that's because the particular formula, the particular mathematical equation that created this projection, uh, preserved all of the correct angles when the shapes are being drawn, and that has the effect of producing uh, a map that looks right as far as the shape goes. The shape uh, retains, is, uh, remains accurate. Okay, what next? Well, we also have equal area projections, and these preserve area. If we take a look at that uh, Mercator projection that we were just looking at, we can see that it's highly distorted in another way. We can see that although the shapes look right, the area is highly, highly distorted. Take a look at the differences uh, between uh, Greenland and South America. They, you would think, according to this map, that Greenland is a whole other continent because it's so much larger than South America. Of course, that's absolutely not true. Greenland is much smaller than South America. And it's not true that Antarctica is so gigantic either. It's much larger than even Asia in this projection. And that's not true. So we have the angles, we have the shape right in here, but we do not have area right. We could choose to preserve area. Here is an equal area projection. This is a Lambert cylindrical equal area projection. And we can see that it does uh, make sure that the area representations of all of the continents are correct. So if you're in a situation where in your analysis or in your map, it is very important to show area accurately, then you need an equal area projection. 
you can see Greenland, you can see Antarctica, uh, and all of everything else is, is shown proportionally. Of course, what's happened here is that we have now distorted the shape. Everything does not look right. The shape is not there anymore. So we've sacrificed shape, we've sacrificed the correct representation of angles in order to correctly represent area. And this is a fundamental component of mapping. It is impossible, it's absolutely impossible for any map to accurately show both angles, which means shape, as well as area at the same time. Those two are mutually exclusive. So one of the big decisions that you have to make whenever you're doing cartography is whether or not uh, you need uh, shape or whether you need area. And then you need to make the right uh, cartographic choice for your projection depending on that. Because you cannot have both. It's actually impossible uh, to have both. So it's got to be one or the other. Okay, what's another kind of thing that we can preserve? Well, azimuthal projections preserve direction. We can make sure that direction is accurate. Let me also show you, while we're talking about uh, direction, we can also have equidistant projections which preserve distance. So what do you need preserved? Angles, shape, area, direction, or distance. Now, it is true that with the azimuthal and equidistant projections, we don't have to make the decision that we have to make between the conformal and the equal area projections. There are some projections that in some situations can be both azimuthal and equidistant. They can preserve direction and distance, at least from very specific points of the map. Let's take a look at a couple of examples there. Here is an azimuthal projection. It is preserving direction, but it's only preserving direction in a very specific way. It's only preserving direction from the North Pole the very center point on this map, as long as you're measuring out from the North Pole, you can measure out in any direction that you want and get an accurate direction to any other point on the planet. You can't measure from London to New York and try expect to get an accurate direction. As long as you are measuring from the North Pole, you can get accurate direction to any other point on the planet. You know, what direction do you have to travel to get there if you're just flying there straight, sort of as the crow flies? This kind of projection preserves direction, but not from all points on the map, a very specific point on the map. Likewise, this polar azimuthal projection preserves distance, but it preserves distance in the exact same way. If I want to make a measurement and I want to find out how far it is uh, in miles or kilometers or whatever, from the North Pole to any other point on the planet, I can make that measurement and it will be accurate on this particular projection. I cannot measure from Tokyo to Moscow. I cannot measure from London to New York. You know, I cannot measure from uh, Los Angeles to Prague. I will get the wrong answer because that uh, distance is distorted. But as long as I am measuring from the central point, in this case it happens to be set up so that central point is the North Pole, I can measure out from that and I can get the correct distance. So in this case, this polar azimuthal projection happens to be both equidistant uh, and preserves uh, direction as long as you are measuring from the center point. So you see, understanding how to use particular maps and what kind of information you can get off of a map uh, is going to be very important because you cannot uh, get direction, you cannot get distance, you cannot get area uh, off of every single map that you've got. You have got to have a specific projection that is designed to show you that kind of information. Well, what else can we have? The next thing we can have is compromise projections. Compromise projections preserve nothing. Compromise projections do not preserve angles or shape. They do not preserve area. They do not preserve direction. They do not preserve distance. They preserve absolutely nothing. Why in the world would you want to have a projection that preserves no information whatsoever? Let me show you an example of a compromise projection. Here is a compromise projection. It preserves nothing. This is actually called a Robinson projection. For a long time, this one was used by National Geographic as a general reference map of the planet. So this projection has been designed so that even though, yes, it distorts shape, distorts angle, yes, it distorts area, yes, it distorts direction, yes, it distorts distance, but it doesn't distort any of those too badly or not badly enough that it's not acceptable for a general reference map of the world. And so if you are doing something like trying to put together a magazine like National Geographic or you're trying to put together a, a wall map of the world, 
in which you want to provide as a general reference to people about the physical or political uh, features of the planet, then what you do is you may want to use a compromise projection. And so you have to know that what this is good for and what it's not good for. If you, as long as you're using it for general reference, for general information purposes, a compromise projection may be exactly what you need. It may strike that balance between accurate representation of the shape and also accurate representation of the area, strike a balance there, uh, in order to show the basic phenomenon that you're trying to show. And as long as you don't require uh, perfect accuracy in either one, this may be the option for you. So this is a compromise projection. You see lots and lots of uh, world wall maps that are based on compromise projections. So you just have to know that absolutely everything, actually, that this one is showing you is a little wrong. So this one isn't a perfect representation of the planet. It's actually a little wrong in every regard. Well, what else? Well, there are also other special case projections uh, that will handle certain uh, aspects in special situations. So I'm not going to cover too many of those, but there are a few other special case projections. Uh, one of them that people always see and want to know about are these interrupted projections. For instance, here is a homolysine projection uh, that is interrupted. You know, if you're trying to make that transformation from the three-dimensional surface of the planet to something two-dimensional, you know, slicing it like this and producing an interrupted projection is one option. Okay, so here are the different bits of information that a projection can preserve. Please take note of these and be aware that some of these are mutually exclusive, like uh, pres preservation of angle and preservation of area. You cannot do both. In some cases, you can preserve something like direction and distance, but not across the entire map. You'd have to do that only from a certain point, as we saw with the azimuthal projection that I showed you here. So be familiar with these, and you have to know what your analysis requires so that you make sure that you're using the right projection. That's your responsibility as the cartographer.